we start our discussion today on this topic thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about the reheat cycle and while discussing about reheat cycle again we shall try to see several issues which are involved with this particular cycle. But you know that if we try to recall in the last class we have discussed about the modifications of simple Rankine cycle. In this context we have also discussed the effect that due to the lowering the condenser pressure. And in continuation of that particular you know aspect of enhancing the efficiency of the cycle. Today we shall briefly discuss about other two you know uh, possible ways by how we can increase the efficiency of the simple Rankine cycle. We shall discuss both the uh, we shall discuss both merits and demerits associated with the modifications that we are going to discuss today and also we shall discuss that the modifications I mean even after having these modifications with the simple Rankine cycle still this cycle cannot be you know considered in the real power plant essentially because of some disadvantageous features. And while we are talking we shall be talking about those disadvantageous features reheat cycle seems to be an alternative and we shall discuss this part again. So, you know that uh, if we try to discuss about modifications of simple Rankine cycle. Number one that we have already discussed in the last class that is lowering the condenser pressure. Number two and number three that we are going to discuss today are the superheating the steam superheating the steam beyond that particular point that is point 3. So, if we try to draw the T s diagram here. So, we have discussed that this is the simple Rankine cycle, this is P condenser and this is P boiler. So, this is uh, point number 2, this is point number 3, this is point number 4 and this is point number 1. So, superheating the steam beyond point 3 that would be an alternative to enhance the efficiency of the cycle that is quite you know visible if we really look for this stage diagram. Okay, we shall discuss today that point and finally, another important point is that is increasing the boiler pressure. So, today we shall discuss these two aspect one by one. Let us first look at the second one that is superheating the steam. So, if we go to discuss that particular aspect that is superheating the 
this team. We shall discuss this particular aspect by drawing the processes in T s plane. So, uh, if we go for the T s diagram, this is P condenser and this is P boiler. You know that this is 1, this is 2, this point is 3. Let us briefly draw the schematic of the power plant. So, this is point 1, 2, 3, 4. It is not mandatory that always you have to consider inlet to the pump should be denoted by point 1 that is up to you. We are trying to stick to the same notation exactly what we have followed in the previous classes. So, this is W out, this is Q out, this is Q in and this is W in, this is turbine. Now, you see that if we allow steam to expand in the turbine from point 3, and we can get 0.4. So, this is basically what we have seen in the context of simple Rankine cycle, right. Today, we shall discuss that if we allow steam to be superheated beyond 0.3. So, if I try to identify that particular process here say we are allowing steam to super uh, steam to be superheated beyond 0.3 and this is 0.3 prime and this point is 4 prime. So, you can see that if we allow steam to be superheated beyond 0.3 this is the additional network we are going to get. So, this is delta w net I am writing in the specific form. So, if you look at carefully that by superheating steam we can get this additional delta w net probably it is because of this reason efficiency can be increased because efficiency efficiency is equal to w net divided by q in i am writing in specific form so this is basically for the simple rankine cycle now i can write the expression that is eta simple Rankine with superheating steam, then it is W net plus delta W net divided by Q 
few in. This is very important. Will this Q in re will remain simply Q in or to achieve this extra work output we need to supply more heat that you can easily say easily see that if we allow steam to be superheated from 0 0.3 to 3 prime we also need to supply additional amount of heat which is required for superheating this steam. So, here we can write delta Q in all these are you know specific quantities. Question is so you know that uh, we are getting so both the quantities written in both in numerator and denominator they are increasing by this small quantities. So, which one the relative increase of W net if the relative increment of delta W net is greater than the increment of delta Q in then we can say that the efficiency of the simple Rankine cycle modified with superheating would be higher than the simple Rankine cycle. So, that means, if so, if we go to the next slide that means, eta simple Rankine with superheat will be equal to W net plus delta W net by Q in plus delta Q in. Now, see it is very important this delta W net by delta Q in is greater than W net by Q in. This is what is seen in practice. If we go back to the slide, see I mean why this delta W net, I mean delta W net, we are talking about delta W net. So, this is nothing but Q H minus Q L. So, you can see that if we try to superheat steam beyond 0.3, we need additional amount of heat to be supplied for this process for the superheating. Additionally, if we allow steam to be superheated from 3 to 3 prime, you can see from the schematic depiction that you know that this is the you know. So, this is 4 prime. So, this is additional amount of heat that must be rejected in the condenser. So, this Q L delta Q L right or delta Q out. So, this additional amount of heat must be rejected if we allow steam to be superheated from 3 to 3 prime. Even after having this amount of heat rejection, can we really have higher efficiency? Yes, because you can say that already I have written that delta W net by delta Q in is greater than W net by Q in. Hence, you can say this quantity will be must, this quantity must be greater than eta simple Rankine. See now, if you try to see it, this amount of why? See delta W net that we can see because Q L. So, Q L increases. So, Q L is increasing, but that increase in Q L is basically in the linear uh, that that decreases the rejection basically Q out the amount of heat which is rejected that is in this linear uh, that, that that is linear while you know the amount of heat that we are supplying that you know is not linear. So, this is non linear. So, basically though there is some amount of heat you know must be rejected if we increase the temperature of steam beyond 0.3 rather if we superheat steam beyond 0.3, but this you know that Q out 
is not relatively higher than the amount of heat that is added because Q h that is amount of heat which is added to achieve this delta W net which is, which is you know uh, non-linear I mean heat is added non-linearly while heat is rejected linearly. Okay. So, if that is the case you know that uh, we can achieve the higher thermal efficiency. One question is advantage is that very important advantage is that by superheating steam beyond 0.3 we can increase the quality of the steam at the exit of the turbine. Okay. So, this is very important one of the important advantage. So, advantage is quality of steam at the turbine exit improves that is very important advantage number two is thermal efficiency of the cycle increases right. Let me write here. So, that is you know uh, 1 minus q out divided by q in. As I told you this is also increases, this is also increases. So, q out increases as compared to this simple ranking cycle for the for this particular case q in also increases, but the increase in q in is non-linear while the increase in q out is linear that is easily observable from this T s diagram. So, the increase in q n is you know taking place non-linearly while the increase in q out that, that, that takes place linearly. So, it is because of this reason already I have written that delta W net by Q in becomes higher than W net by Q in the resultant effect is the is the increase of the efficiency of this Rankine cycle with superheating. So, this is these two are the uh, advantage disadvantage I am not going to write here, but you look at see if we try to increase the temperature of steam beyond 3. Uh, additional arrangement must be there. So, I am not talking about that additional amount of uh, heat must be supplied by increasing the superheat by increasing the temperature of steam beyond 3 that is we are going to increase the average temperature at which heat is added to the uh, in, in the boiler. So, uh, efficiency will increase, but to, to, to achieve that in practice special arrangement needed and which is costlier not only the you know initial cost, but also the operational cost. So, the superheating process requires a special arrangement to be done inside the plant inside the boiler to be precise not only that. So, apart from the initial cost we need to have proper maintenance during the operation of the plant. So, you know operational cost is involved. So, that is one of the uh, disadvantageous feature. Second is we cannot increase the temperature of steam arbitrarily because that is restricted by the metallurgical consideration of the turbine blades. So, you know that we are increasing. So, this is basically again sensible heating. So, we can increase steam temperature from 3 to 3 prime even 3 double prime quality will keep on increasing at the exit of the turbine that is of course, a favorable aspect of this particular process, but we also need to keep in mind that the material blade material should be able to withstand that temperature there should not be any crack thermal crack to be generated within the blade. So, uh, this is again an another disadvantageous feature. So, uh, I am not going to write, but I am telling. So, next is we have discussed about these two next is the 
increasing the boiler pressure. Increasing the boiler pressure. Again, uh, let me draw the TS diagram. That is P condenser, that is P boiler. Say, what we are doing? We are increasing in the last uh, slide. We have seen that if we increasing, if we increase, or if we superheat steam from three to three prime. So, I mean, essentially, what we are doing, we are increasing the temperature which in turn increases, increases the average temperature at which it is added. Okay. So, instead of supporting uh, as I told you that uh, it, it requires special arrangement to be you know uh, done inside the boiler, not only the initial cost, but also the operational cost uh, involved with this particular arrangement. So, I mean instead of looking at that particular point aspect, can't we increase this additional temper additional heat. So, basically what we are doing we are supplying this amount of additional heat. So, can we in can we you know supply this amount of heat even at a constant temperature in the boiler itself. So, as I told you this steam which will be generated in the boiler that will be again taken through some special you know arrangements. So, that steam can be superheated. So, instead of doing that if we look at another way of getting this amount of additional heat, but at a constant temperature inside the boiler and that is nothing but increasing the boiler pressure. So, idea is just for the discussion. So, what we are doing you know we are increasing temperature up to 3 prime. So, without superheating we also can increase the temperature or also we also can achieve the steam temperature up to that by increasing the boiler pressure. By how? Say we are superheating steam up to this particular point the, this is so this is 1, uh, this is 2, this is 3, this is 3, this is 4. Now, can we increase boiler pressure? Let me draw using different another color. So, this is the temperature, maybe we can have so this is two prime. So, this is 3 prime, this is 4 prime. Okay. So, this is the concept you know that uh, without superheating what we are doing, we are trying to achieve this additional amount of heat. I mean we are we are trying to increase the average temperature of heating by increasing boiler pressure from P boiler to P boiler. Dash. So, you know that the temperature is 3 and 3 prime this te the temperature these two temperatures are same. So, what we are going to have? We are going to have additional amount of W net that is the hashed portion. So, this is plus delta W net. So, if we increase if we increase boiler pressure that means, if we allow boiler to be boiler to operate at a higher pressure, we can achieve this additional amount of heat that we used to get by superheating steam in the earlier case. So, I mean uh, here, but we also if we look at this TS diagram, we also can see at the cost of this delta W net, we are also having this is this is the amount of work that we are not getting now. 
So, this is minus delta w net, right. So, if we do not superheat steam, rather if we allow boiler at a higher boiler to operate at a higher pressure, probably we can get the same average temperature at which you know heat must be added to the cycle. So, if we do so, you can see that we will be getting this is the amount of delta w net, this is also this is the amount of delta w net that we are not getting because that is you can see from the schematic depiction. So, you know that uh, so this is basically uh, these two delta w net are equal. So, you may ask me a question ok, we can have this particular you know uh, method. So, that means, we are allowing boiler to operate at a higher pressure. So, that superheating arrangement is not required now, we can have the same temperature at which it is added to the cycle. Though we are getting delta w net by operating boiler at a higher pressure, but at the same time we need to compromise this amount of w net. So, this plus delta w net and minus delta w net these two are equal. So, they will cancel each other. Now, if you look at carefully though we are going to compromise this delta w net, but we are getting plus delta w net. So, this plus delta w net is almost equal to minus delta w net. So, the overall effect is null. So, there is no additional effect, but if you look at the stage diagram carefully, you will find that by allowing boiler to be operated at a higher pressure, we are going to reduce this is delta q out. So, if we allow steam to be superheated beyond up to this point, then this amount of and now if we allow boiler to be operate boiler to be operated at a higher pressure, probably we can save this amount of heat rejection in the condenser. So, this is basically the quantity we can save. So, what we can do? We can reduce the amount of heat that must be rejected at the condenser in the condenser if we allow steam to be uh, boiler to be operated at a higher pressure. So, we are not going to compromise the uh, mean temperature at which it is added, we are also not going to get additional w net because these two will cancel each other, but we can reduce delta q. So, we can reduce q out right. So, you know that efficiency of is nothing but 1 minus q out divided by q in. If we can reduce this quantity by having the special method, then we can increase the efficiency of the cycle. So, eta Rankine with higher boiler pressure will be greater than eta simple Rankine. Okay. So, this is the you know concept. So, we can increase efficiency only by reducing the amount of heat that will be rejected in the condenser. So, by saving certain amount of heat rejection, we can increase the efficiency of the Rankine cycle modified with this increasing boiler pressure, because the gross effect due to delta w net that we are going to get out of uh, from this particular you know higher boiler pressure and uh, this addition you know uh, reduction in delta w net due to uh, this uh, uh, superheating will cancel each other. So, the gross effect is increase in efficiency, but disadvantage is so advantage is that we do not require special arrangement for superheating this steam. So, if we can eliminate it, there is no need of initial cost as well as the operational cost for this special arrangement. But disadvantage is that by increasing boiler pressure again we are going to 
deteriorate the quality of the steam at the exit of the turbine. So, I am writing the steam quality at the exit of the turbine will be poor. So, this is the disadvantage. Okay. So, now if we try to discuss that in the last class we have discussed about increase lowering the condenser pressure. If we lower the condenser pressure we have seen that you know uh, maybe you are going to have a particular condenser which will operate and at a pressure which is less than atmospheric pressure though we cannot reduce condenser pressure drastically, but even then we need to compromise the quality of the steam that is what we have seen. Today whatever we have discussed that superheating the steam only disadvantage is that you know that uh, uh, we need additional cost for the you know installation of a special system for superheating as well as the operational cost fine. And also you know that uh, we should be careful about the selection of the turbine blade material such that a particular material would be able to withstand that high temperature. While coming to the third option that is increasing the boiler pressure, what we can see that though we can increase the efficiency of the cycle, but again we need to compromise the quality of the steam at the exit of the turbine. So, considering all those you know that uh, although we have discussed about the modifications of simple Rankine cycle, but none of these modifications you know uh, what we have seen from the discussion uh, is suitable uh, for the power plant essentially to have higher efficiency without inviting any additional uh, problems. To this particular end that is uh, though modifications are there employing either of these modifications we can increase the efficiency of the cycle, but at the same time we are also going to introduce another problems. Reheat cycle seems to be uh, you know an alternative to be precise for the increase in efficiency of the plant essentially by exploiting the high boiler pressure and superheating the steam, but at the cost of increasing the quality of the steam at the exit. So, let me tell you again what we have discussed that either lowering the condenser pressure or increasing the boiler pressure we need to compromise the quality of the steam. If we need to go for superheating the steam then we need to again uh, consider the additional cost involved with the initial as well as the operational cost uh, operational uh, issues. So, initial cost will be high as well as operational cost will be high. So, I mean we can see that though we can increase efficiency, but we are going to have several other problems. Reheat cycle offers an alternative the you know advantageous, advantageous features are reheat cycle increases I mean reheat cycle offers higher thermal efficiency by exploiting high boiler pressure, superheating the steam and also eliminating the high moisture content of the steam at the exit of the turbine. So, reheat cycle which is provides an or seems to be an alternative
to increase the efficiency. I mean we can increase cycle efficiency that means, we also can look for I mean we can also we also can expect that the efficiency of the plant will increase, because essentially all the processes will be compared by this particular cycle. So, all the processes of a power plant will be compared by this reheat cycle. So, seems to be an alternative to increase the efficiency by using high boiler pressure and superating the steam, but eliminating the high moisture content in the steam at the exit of the turbine. So, this is very important you know that already I have written let me tell you. So, this cycle seems to be an alternative we will discuss we are claiming that this cycle will offer high efficiency thermal efficiency if you would like to have it we need to have high boiler pressure that means the boiler should be operated at a higher pressure. We also need to go for superheating the steam, but if we can have this two you know that is high boiler pressure and if we can have special arrangement that we can increase the uh, superheat of the we can we can superheat the steam, we can eliminate the probability of having high moisture content uh, in the steam at the turbine exit. So, you know you may ask me a question that if we again go for superheating the steam. So, idea is we will be using high boiler pressure if we use high boiler pressure you know that then we will be using we will be superheating the steam, but the degree of superheat should be controlled. So, if we allow boiler to be operated at a low pressure then the degree of superheat required uh, that the degree of superheat that will be uh, needed to achieve high thermal efficiency will be very high. If you would like to have high degree of superheat then probably arrangement should be again much more complex and initial as well as operational costs will be higher. So, instead we are thinking to increase high boiler pressure. So, that the degree of superheat should be within the uh, within uh, our control that means, that means within a controllable uh, limit and also if we can superheat probability the moisture content at the exit of the turbine also can be reduced. So, the idea is to use high boiler pressure, so that the degree of superheat can be reduced still we need to go for superheating, so that moisture content at the exit of the turbine can be reduced. So, if we can do it probably we can increase the efficiency of the cycle and that is what is the reheat cycle. So, with this I stop here today and in the next class we shall discuss about the reheat cycle and we shall go for its analysis. Thank you. Mm -hmm.